equivalent expressions, mostly using the distributive property. What is the distributive property? Let me help you out. Let me show you. All right, guys, you're going to be seeing lots of this. And I have a lot of videos on the distributive property, but we'll just make one more for it, right? Here we go. Let's say I have three times the quantity X plus two, for example. Now pretend you're the three and you have friends that go to another school and friends that go to this school. Okay, so we want to play with our friends from the other school and we want to play with our friends from the school. So it's kind of like you distribute yourself to these friends and then you distribute yourself to your other friends. So when it's right next here, that means multiply 3x. So 3 times x plus, see where I got that plus sign from? 3 times 2, which is 6. So this right here is equal to that. Let's try another. Let's try another one. In fact, let's just try this one. 7 times y plus 7 times 5. Let's see what we get. So 7 times y is 7y. And then 7 times 5 is 35, guys. See that? It's kind of weird with the boxes there. I, I admit that that might confuse some of you, maybe. But that's why I'm here to help. I'm happy to help. Thanks for coming and hanging out with us today. We have 2, two times what equals 4c. Okay, this is kind of going backwards. 2 times what equals 4c. That's right, 2. And then 2 times what equals 2x. So we're distributing that 2. And let's see. So 2 times 2c. So 2 times 2c equals 4c. And then 2 times 1x equals 2x. All right. We'll start going a little faster. Now, we have 4 times d is 4d, and then 4 times 5 is 20. And then we got to make sure the subtraction signs there. So 4d minus 20. You can see this one's here to trick you, because they distributed the 4 to the d, but not to the 5. So 4d minus 20. Oh, and there's one more. It looks like they used the commutative property and put the 4 over here, because you can do that. So they switched this whole factor with this factor, and that's the commutative property. All right. What's the common factor of 60 and 24? That's right, 6. So we're going to factor out 6. 6 times D is 60. 6 times 24, uh-oh, not that one. Let's go and see what this one looks like. 6 times D is 60, and 6 times 4 is 24. So there we go, guys. And also, did they take the 6 and they put it over here for the commutative property? Yeah. Ooh, now we're getting in some rational numbers. Now, rational numbers are fractions and decimals, okay? Rational numbers are fractions and decimals. So 10 times 4a is 40a. And 10 times 1 half, what's half a 10? 10 times 1 half is 5. So we got this one here. And also, 10 times this quantity here is also equal to this quantity times 10. All right, now this is the associative property, guys. The associative property says as long as it's all addition, you can just change these grouping symbols here, these parentheses. So now we want the 4.1, the 1y, and the 0.4 to remain in the same order, and the only thing that changes are the parentheses. All right. Do you see how this one, they switched the order here? 
So not that one. They switched the order there. This one, they didn't put the Y. Usually it stays in the same order and all they do is switch the grouping symbols. Let's try this one. Here they switched the grouping symbols, but they also switched the order. But this, okay then. Oh, I see. See that one Y? That one Y has got to remain. So that's why that one didn't work. It's this one here. That tricky little Y there. All right. Moving right along, we have what's a common factor of 3T and 6? That's right. 3 would be the greatest common factor there. So we factor out the 3. And we have 3 times t is 3t, and 3 times 6 is 18. Oh, not that one. Here it is. 3 times t is 3t, and 3 times 2 is 6. And then we use the commutative property to switch those around, because you can do that with if it's all multiplication or all addition. Ooh, look at this one. 14 times b squared is 14b squared. And 14 times 4.52 is, I'm assuming, 63.28. And now they just switched. Yeah, this one. Instead of having the 14 here, they put it here, which you can do. Which of the following is equivalent to the expression 7 times the quantity 2y plus 6? Now, here's an important thing that's in our 6th grade standards. This is, um, this right here is the two factors. 7 is a factor and 2y plus 6 is a factor. Okay, so this is a factor and this is a factor. Those are the two factors there. Uh, in what we did before in vision, which was digits, they would always ask that question. What are the two factors of this? So it would be seven, and then this is the other factor. I haven't seen it on Envision too much, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't know it. We should still know that which of the following is equivalent to the, this expression. So we're going to do the community or the distributive property. Seven times two y is fourteen y, and seven times six is forty two. So right here, and now. We're going to combine like terms. Now, it can't be this one, but see how 7y plus 7y is equal to 14y? And then you have the 42 there, so this one's equal because 7y plus 7y is 14y, and then the 42, of course. All right, what's the greatest common factor here of 24y and 18? That's right, 6. So we're going to factor out 6. And 6 times 4y is 24y. And 6 times 3 is 18. So this one. And now, let's see. 6 times 4y is 24y. 6 times 11 is 66. Not that one. You see the 7y plus the 17y? Well, Guys, that equals 24y. And the minus 18, the minus 18. So all three of these here are equivalent, but not that one. And then on this, what's the greatest common factor? of 24x and 30. That's right, 6. We're going to factor out the 6. 6 times 4x is 24x, and 6 times 5 is 30. Now, let's see if we can get 24x out of this. We have the minus 30 here, which goes with that. This 
plus this would equal 24x. Now, there's another way, guys, that we learned in the lesson, and that is to substitute 2 in. So substitute 2 in for here and here and here and here, and then solve them all out, and you'll get um, that those are all equivalent. Okay, never substitute one in. If you substitute one in, it'll give you a false reading. It'll give you a false sense that they're equivalent, which they're not. So always substitute two or more in to figure it, figure that out. And that's what we learned in the lesson. Well, what happened there, guys? Did I not hit check answer? I guess not. All right. 2 times 9x is 18x. And 2 times a half is 1. So 18x plus 1. That one's not right. And now look, 9x plus 9x is 18x. A half plus a half is 1. These are fun. Whoa. Does anyone else do that? Like when they see a problem like this come up, you're just like, oh, gosh. <laughs> Write an algebraic expression that represents each purchase. Mr. Smith bought X number of soccer balls and two baseballs. Bill and Raj are on a baseball team. They each bought a baseball and X pairs of sweat socks. Sweat socks. What are sweat socks? Suppose X has the same value in both of the expressions you wrote for 11. Are the two expressions you wrote for 11 equivalent? Explain. Sunal, Sunji, says the soccer balls cost one and one-fifth times as much as the baseballs cost. Do you agree? Explain. Well, let's check. The soccer ball cost one and one-fifth times as much as the baseball. Well, let's see. Let's see if that's true. Sanji says the soccer ball. So we're going to go 5 times 1 and 1 fifth, which the way we do that is 5 over 1 times 6 over 5, which these can cross cancel, and we get 6. So, yes, that is true. We do agree. So write an expression. Write an expression for the cost of Mr. Smith's purchase. And Mr. Smith purchased X number of soccer balls and two baseballs. So soccer balls cost $6. So 6 times X plus two baseballs, 2 times 5. Two. Now, I'm not sure if they want this or if they want 6x plus 10. Let's see. Okay. I guess they would have accepted both for the baseball team's purchase. They each bought a baseball and X pairs of sweat socks. So, baseball and X pairs of sweat socks. Bill and Raj are on a baseball team. They each bought a baseball. So two times five, since there's two of them, right? Two times five for the baseball, plus X pairs of sweat socks. Sweat socks cost $3. So 3 times x, or just 3x. Oh, find an expression for the total cost for one team member. All right, it just said Bill and Raj, so maybe they want this, just f for one team member. So maybe they want for the baseball team's purchase. Maybe they want one baseball 
plus $3 times X socks. Find an expression for the total cost for one team member and multiply by the number of team members who are purchasing the equipment. Okay, so now we have to multiply this times however many team members. How many team members are there, guys? So we're going to take this times the number of team members. Okay, how many team members do we have? All right, guys, so I, I went ahead and did it all, so I didn't waste any of your time. But um, so we were right here, and then I was like, how many people are on the baseball team? Well, Bill and Raj. So we go two times this quantity here for part B, all right? Now, for this one here, if you test out any value other than one, do not test out one. So don't test out one. They, that's there to trick you. But any other for any other value, it they are equivalent because watch this. Two times five is ten. You see that's equivalent there. And then two times three x is six x. See that right there? All right. And now remember what we did earlier when we did five times one and one fifth and we got six? That means that this is true. All right. Wow, we did it. And that was harder even for me. So I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye guys.